Hi everyone, welcome back to Elmer's Restoration. We're getting there with the subframe. I'm just taking my time making sure it's done right. I'm trying to go into as much detail as I can for you. If I'm going into too much detail, just tell me and I'll, I'll amend my editing. The weather's playing a huge part in what I'm doing just now because I want to be doing bits and pieces to Ed. But... Snow. Snow, snow, snow. So it's snow in springtime, which is rubbish because we seem to have had snow for months and months. Good side, I get to do more on Eleanor. Bad side, I don't get as much done on Ed and I want to get Ed up and running, ready to go, so I can enjoy him in the dry weather. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue where I left off the last time getting into the subframe. I've not got an awful lot left to do with it. It's quite time consuming though because a lot of it's painting, waiting on paint dry, then painting again, and you know, it is time consuming so I try to fit as much as I can into the videos but it takes me a few days at a time to get from different stages. Which is all part of the restoration, which is what I enjoy. Right, so you've seen me stripping down and building up the left hand side of the rear subframe. I'll be doing the right hand side as well and I did say I wasn't going to put that in a video because it's mainly duplicate work. The only difference being the, the way the hub nut comes off. So for the right hand side it turned um, clockwise to loosen just because of the way the wheel rotation. So um, other than that it's pretty much the same. I usually record it on video anyway just for my own logs so if anyone wants me to put it on a fast time lapse in a video can do that, that's not a problem, let me know. And if anyone does and they want, if they've got any special request tunes they want me to play through it to make it a bit better, I'll um yeah I'm happy to do that otherwise I'll just I'll just um show you the finish result. Um like I said like I've said before I don't know I don't want to bore people I'm trying to keep it interesting as I can. You've heard me mention before the flexi hoses I've went with the good ridge and you see me taking it off so it's straightforward. Goes through here, shake proof washer. Held on by a nut. There we go. Just once that's held on, just in case of lining this up. This can be the tricky bit because this has obviously been made by hand, this, and it needs to be a good seal, so it has to be a good seal around here. So if you need to just move the, the flexi pipe a bit more and Copper grease. What did you do without copper grease? Now you've seen what I've done without copper grease. Flop every part. So this can be fairly just getting it lined up right because I don't want to cross thread it. Right, new oil seal has arrived. A couple of quid. Right, the only thing I never took out of this was the inner race because I'm using the same bearing. And remember, this the inner race has to go with the bearing that it came with. When I took the oil seal out, I had to knock out, so I don't know how well you can see in here, but there's a gap between the inner race and the inside of the, the hub. That needs to be flush on both sides. Because <clears throat> if it's not level, then the bearing will be sitting at an angle on the wheel. You know, it'll, it'll wear the bearings out in no time and the wheel won't run freely, so... And on both sides... Right, 
there we go, top 10. It's not the best light, unfortunately, but you can see it's um, sitting level in there, as it should be. So this is similar to the <clears throat> front ones, if you watched my video on the bearings for that. You basically need to pack these bearings with grease. Make sure the rollers get right inside here, and it has to be special bearing grease. It sits in here like that. And then the oil seal is tapped into there. And the way you know that goes is this elasticated bit here faces in the way. So then that's tapped into place here. Obviously once the grease has been put in. And on this side <coughs> the bearing sits in here covered in grease, packed with grease and then the washer sits here then it goes through the hub. But we'll cover all that, I'm just trying to explain the orientation and slow time before I um, start speeding you up. So um, let's get these back in. hub back on, so this central shaft here I'm just going to put some axle grease on just to help it slide on a bit better. You need to be careful with this bit here that you don't get paint on it because it's a tight fit as it is and if you put paint on it'll struggle to go on and it has to be smooth so before I done this I just cleaned it up with a little bit of degreaser just to make sure because it is tight and what I'm going to do with this I'm just going to take these bearings out at the moment till we can get it over and likewise I'm coating the inside space of the bearing so that it goes over So just this lip here, just getting it over it, has to be square to go over it, and it obviously has to hold it well in place. And this is just going to be just as tight. There we go. So wash up Like comes off easy enough, but yeah. all over the shiny, nice new parts. I 
and it stinks. Right, finally, castle nut. These are usually quite well lubed, but That'll get tightened down, I'll tighten that down in a minute. I'm not going to torque it up just now because it'll be easier torquing up once it's on the vehicle. Once it's on the subframe. I can get a bit more leverage. So I'll tighten this down, I'll come back to you. So that's that tightened down. Not really tight, I've still to torque that up, but you can see it's um it's moving nice, nice and free. In comparison to the other side. That's taking quite a bit of effort to turn that, you know, it's not moving free at all. So I am glad I went in there and changed the grease and got it all cleaned out. So yeah, that's another one off the list. Nearly finished the radius arm, we've just got to install the brake shoes. Right, the brakes. <clears throat> You're not sure how they go back on, take plenty of photos, or you can always leave the other side on so you've got a reference point. The handbrake here, make sure it goes on the wrong way, it'll save you a lot of hassle later on. So it basically, where are we? If, the way I remember it is this bit here sits up, looks like a duck. Quack, quack. So this goes through, you can only go one way, once you've done a few you'll know. It's easier, I have to say, when I watched it the first, before the first time I done it, it's a lot harder, or it looks a lot harder watching someone do it than it is to actually attempt it yourself. It's fiddly, yes, but it's alright. So that, if you can put that through there first, it gives you a good reference <coughs> to how um, everything else goes. Any moving parts, like the handbrake, Metal metal can start making squeaking noises, so that's when copper grease come into it. So the, this part here and the, the part around the other side that looks like a duck are the part that makes contact with the shoe. So I'm just gonna give it some copper grease to stop it squeaking. doesn't have to be a great amount. <clears throat> the shoes, just be careful when you're working with copper grease that you're not getting copper grease on the actual surface of the shoe because brakes won't work. I'll do that side at the moment. See, it's fairly fiddly trying to balance this and um, show you guys at the same time. But I'll try my best. So, this part here is where this fits through. Like I say, it can be fiddly, it just take your time, make sure you're doing it right. The only way I've learned how to do this is by watching people practicing, getting it wrong and doing it myself. It's the only way you can do these things, otherwise 
how do you do them? So these bits here need to go in the master cylinder. And you can see now why it becomes awkward and fiddly. And I'll show you that in a minute. But um, if you remember as well, I taped this up to stop the adjuster parts coming out. So And as you can see, that's it sitting in place. If I let go, it falls away. And that's why you've got the springs. The springs just hold it all in place. So if you find an easy way to do this bit, let me know. Because it's frustrating. So this one, you can see the springs are slightly different. Different lengths and different styles. The one with the coil bit in the middle goes on where the brake adjuster are and it goes in like this and hooks on. So one end hooks on here, this little bit here and the other end hooks on this bit here. Whatever way you do it doesn't matter as long as you get the end result. I'll get that in a minute, but this one is the same, it goes on the top where the wheel cylinder is and one bit hooks on here the other bit hooks on this hole here just in there you can see these bits are lined up they can be adjusted a bit better and lined up, pushed in there once the springs are in place and again these, these are the same, they sit against these adjusters here that took a lot of fiddling. It's just fiddly because the springs have to be in here and then, you know, it all has to be in. I'm limited in my hand what I can do, although it is getting stronger, I still can't put any pressure on it. So, try to do it with one and a half hands, with hands covered in grease, as you can imagine. And there was a few bits of swearing, so. But, got there in the end. As you can see, it's all done up by the springs. make sure these bits are all lined up before it goes on, before the drum goes on. On the other side, spring, spring. What to check to make sure you have got it is if you manoeuvre the handbrake and you should see basically these moving out. And you know it's all set up correctly. So, not my most favourite job, but um, one of the most important jobs. Right everybody, that's the end of another video. Thanks for watching again. Brakes, I've said before, if you're not confident with brakes or you're not sure, get a professional to do it. You can't take chances when it comes to brakes. Even if you know what you're doing, double, triple check because they're brakes, you know, you need brakes. So, we got a few bits and pieces done in that video. Still got a few more to go to get the subframe fully built up, but we're getting there. And um, I'll just continue where I left off in the next video. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.